I talked to my sister and she's definitely agreed to allow her son to come meet with you. She needs help with his motivation. She can't figure it out. Well, you may know God, but you don't know my parents. Servants of God, are you ready? Yes. yes. Here are your tools. One toilet plunger, one toilet brush. Now go and serve the Lord with gladness. She did it again. You know, I just left the meeting with the pastor and she gave me a couple of tools to help me become a better leader. And now I think it's time for me to pass them on to you. Wow. I am finally beginning to get used to you. I had to put two kids in a body bag this morning. She wants me to reconcile with my ex-wife. She wants me to forgive her, remarry, and just pretend like nothing ever happened. Hello, it's me, I'm Tiffany. did you marry her? With any luck, the lightning from this storm will strike her dead on the way to the car. Now, now, now. It is raining hard, though. I absolutely hate that woman. I hate her. I believe Jesus hates that woman. I don't think so. And I don't think he wants you to hate her either. Look, we're going to talk this thing through, but right now I'm going to call Oster Lansky and get him to um, see if he can't do something to handle the missus. Uh, a former missus. Former missus. Uh, yes, Oster Lansky, please. Billy, it's Lynn. Listen, honey, we need you over here and we need you over here now. Pastor McKnight's uh, former, shall we say, dearly espoused is on the premises, and she is not a happy camper. And I think we're going to need your kind of encouragement to get her to kind of move on down the road. <laughs> that, that'd work. All right, we'll see you in a bit. All right, bye. <laughs> I love that man. And don't you start judging me. I am not going to judge you. Now I think there are a couple of things that you probably need to work out. For heaven's sakes, how long have you known me? I am for you. I'm not against you. I will always be for you. I'm sorry, but just knowing that she knows where I work, that is driving me over the edge. Well, don't jump yet. We're going to work this thing out. We're just going to talk it through. You know I had to get a restraining order against her. No, I didn't know that, but it could work in our favor. I mean, think about it. Might be a little ammunition for uh, Officer Lansky if he needs to suggest, shall we say, just a little bit of jail time? How about a lot of jail time? All right. Look, I understand that I don't understand all that woman has put you through. But that hate that's inside of you, that puppy got to go. I know. Hating someone is like drinking poison and hoping that the other person dies. Exactly. And you know what my main concern is. You are a minister of the gospel and you lay hands on God's holy seat. And you know we've been down this road before. Remember that deacon of yours who had the hots for, what was her name? Oh, Bitsy Choo Choo. What? You think I'm messing around with old Bitsy? Pay attention. 
but the principle's the same. And remember, hate is just as big a sin as anything that old Deacon Bits have been doing. You know what I'm saying to you? And you remember what my concern was then. Yeah, him imparting something ungodly by laying hands on others. Exactly. So here's the thing. You and the Father need to deal with this thing for two reasons. One, hate will eat you alive. It'll eat you physically, spiritually, and mentally. And two, you don't want to pass any of that mess on. Oh, I just feel so defeated. Why in the world would you feel defeated? <laughs> Derek, you have a God who is passionately, passionately in love with you, despite any faults. And you and a father get this thing cleared up? And I guarantee you, he's going to have the entire heavenly host doing a Pentecostal two-step up there and singing over you. So passionate is his love for you. Look, I know you probably don't believe this, but frankly, I got a couple of things that I need to get cleared up with the Father, too. You know what I'm saying? Why, come on, let's just, let's just pray and ask the Father to deal with some, some stuff inside of us and take care of it. Yeah, come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, Father, we love you so much. Father, how wonderful you are that despite our failures and our weaknesses that you just adore us. And Abba, we adore you right back. <laughs>you. You're certainly not here. So, Pastor McKnight really married a nutcase? Define nutcase. <laughs> there are so many possibilities, but let's start with serial adulterer. Well, the old gal did seem to have a little trouble keeping her shorts on. But she had on shorts? From the pictures I saw, I couldn't tell. Whew. Whew. Right over your head. But seriously, I'm telling you, when I looked at those things, I wanted to cry. It just broke my heart because all I could see, all I could see was rebellion in there. Well, I mean, what are you thinking? Because their parents were missionaries? Because they were godly parents who dedicated their lives to his service. I mean, think of it. She had to have seen people's lives changed, people healed, miracles, and yet she chose to rebel. And not just against her parents, but against God himself. So why did he marry her? Why do you think? <laughs> His out-of-control hormones? Give the lady her prize. <laughs> and you know that hormones that are not put under the authority of Almighty God get you in trouble every time. And the Problem is, most of the time, those problems will follow you for a lifetime. Mm. So, as it stands right now, there is no Mrs. Pastor McKnight, right? No, nope, no Mrs. McKnight. And I feel sorry for him. I mean, man was not meant to live alone, number one. Number two, I've seen him when I could tell he was lonely. Yeah, I mean, he just needs a good woman. He needs a godly woman. One that can walk next to him and walk with him in ministry. Yeah. Ladies, I just overheard you, and I'm so glad that I'm back from vacation. It seems, as you know, that I'm both good and godly. <laughs> and more than one man has found me quite attractive and, and stylish. I'm sure they have, Beatrice. I'm sure they have. That's Sister Winnipeg. Oh, Ooh. don't even... Otherwise, we'll be here all day. Well, 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 if it isn't, isn't Sister Winpeg. <laughs> Looking mighty stylish as usual. <laughs> anyway, um, the Davidson wedding, we need Cookie. to... Cookie! Uh, um, 
No, thank you. Uh, the Davidson um, wedding needs to be put on the now, schedule. Now, I didn't bake these myself, but when I am cooking, there's nothing like it. <laughs> oh. And uh, tonight, I'm fixing fried chicken and mashed potatoes with just a little hint of garlic. Okay, um, what's going on here? Well, Pastor McKnight, we think you kind of need to put yourself out there again. Um, just start dating. Um, you know, we think you need a new wife. Uh, a new what? And did I mention the buttermilk biscuits? They will just melt in your mouth. Uh, look, now let me tell and you. finally, a peach cobbler that will make you scream with delight. Oh, scream. <laughs> That's probably what got him into the mess he's in now. Peach cobbler. Yes, ma'am. That peach cobbler gets you every time. <laughs> you know what? You two are ridiculous. Okay? <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, he's right. We ought to be ashamed. Not me. <laughs> All right. My sincerest apologies, Pastor McKnight. Now that's a little better. So, uh, the wedding. Uh, what's the date? Let's see here. It's August 12th. <clears throat> Uh, 5 p.m. They wanted to have dinner afterwards. Fried chicken and buttermilk biscuits. And a peach cobbler. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Trying to get this thing together. Weddings are always a solemn occasion. Can you? Can we be serious? Can we be serious? He's right. <clears throat> All right, Pastor McKnight. We have the date and we have the time. What we need now are the names of the bride and the groom, just as they're going to appear on the register. So that will be, bride and groom, here we go. That would be Miss Beatrice Winpeg and Pastor Derek McKnight. I'm out. I'm done. Out, out, out. Cookies, Pastor. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I'm a chocoholic. <laughs> Pastor! I did not say that. Oh. Pastor! Oh, my gosh. Go get your chocolate, girl. Go get... Oh, my God. Man, I don't know why in the world she wants to hold on to that old building. Well, she's waiting for us to all hear from God as to what he wants to do with it. Well, that's easy. What, Lord? Dump it. Yes, sir, I hear you loud and clear, and I think it's a great idea. Case closed, problem solved. You are something else. You need to repent because you know you don't hear from God. Look, somebody's got to do some real serious thinking around here because we're footing the bill for the electricity and the upkeep of that old building and we still don't have enough money to bring it up to code. True, part of that is because we pay you too much. But anyway, pay me too much. Yeah. I don't get paid enough, and I should be the head deacon around here. Maybe so, but God has already given us over $100,000. And that's nothing short of a miracle. Uh, it's a miracle when we get the whole thing. Well, how about this? The Bible says praise God in all things. True. Right. He's already given us the first portion. So we should give him praise for that. And then also give him praise for bringing in the rest because I believe he's going to give us the rest of the money. Well, here's another thought. 
Since you're so gung-ho about hanging on to that old building, why don't we hold a raffle and raffle her off? You know, I, I believe it's finally happened. Have you lost your Jesus love in mind? I don't even want to think about what that means. It means holding a raffle for a date with the pastor. You know, she does need a man. Maybe she wouldn't be so crazy around here. No, we're not raffling off the pastor. Yeah, you're probably right. Anyway, she probably wouldn't make enough money to fetch us a cup of coffee. Excuse me. Yes, can we help you? Is your pastor in? No, sorry, she's not. She's out giving communion to the sick and the shut in. Yeah, it's always a good thing when she's out and about. I'm Joshua Raglan. Hey, Joshua. And this is Lamar Hall. Lamar? Nice to meet you. We're the deacons, the leaders of the church. Well, hello, I'm, I'm Pete Lands, And I'm here because it's my understanding you're developing some kind of media program for kids? Yes, we are. You know, I've been working on this thing for months, and I think it's a great way to bring the youth into the church. It's so important, you know? Really? Did you just say that with a straight face? You know what the scripture says about lying? There are six things that God hates, and lying is at the top of that list. Now, now, let's move on. What you were saying... Well, here's my situation. I've got a granddaughter. She's my pride and joy. She's really into making videos. Yeah, a lot of kids are in that these days. Mm -hmm. And this is our ministry, the ministry that we're trying to build, where the youth can come in, they can create and be creative for us media, and also have a godly environment. Well, that's exactly why I want to bring her by here and let her give it a chance. And we'll welcome her in with open arms. Well... And if she likes what you're doing, I'd even consider moving my membership here. I bet you're a tither, aren't you? Did you just really ask that question? What? You're the one who's interested in fixing up the church for the children to have a place to work. It takes money, lots of money. Anyway, did you talk to your pastor about your decision? Not yet. I'd like to make sure this thing works out. Yes, it's going to work out. There's no better place anywhere. Now, by the way, you never mentioned uh, how much you tithe. There you go again. It's a good thing Pastor Lynn is not around. <laughs> it's always a good thing when she's not around. Anyway, I'm quite sure Pastor Lynn will welcome you in with open arms. But as she always says, she's not in the sheep stealing business. But before you finalize your transfer, she will want to talk to your pastor and make sure everything's okay. Well, that's fair enough. Hopefully she'd wait till I make my final decision, though. Yes. You have to talk to her about that. Well, I'll do that. So if there's no objection, I'll bring my granddaughter by this Sunday. It's great. Nice to meet you, gentlemen. Nice to meet you, too. Yes. Oh, oh, by the way, by the way, I'm an elder at my church, so I'd like to set up a meeting with your elders. Uh, uh, you mean deacons? No, no, I mean your elders. If I transfer my membership, I want to make sure my eldership is transferable as well. Could you arrange that? We'll look into it. Thanks. Have a good day. Well, Lamar, are you all prayed up? Why? Well, last I checked, an elder outranks the head deacon. Got to go. What? Bye-bye. What? You know, this place is getting more and more like Grand Central Station. I just saw a stranger walking out the front door. And isn't it wonderful when a stranger feels so at home in the house of God? Yes, and isn't it wonderful when God's house is used for family? And I don't think that band's pictures anywhere in my family album. <laughs> you know, at some point, I'm really going to have to write a book on all the dumb things you say. You know, at some point, I'm going to have to write a book about all the dumb things you do. Well, no, I think I got an idea here. You write your stories, I'm going to write my stories, we'll put them together in one book, and then we'll sell them as a fundraiser to pay off the repairs on the old sanctuary. 
What do you think of that? I don't think you really want to know what I think about that. But speaking of the old church, I'm going to set a date. I'm going to put my foot down and set a date. And if we don't make the money to pay off the contractor by that date, I'm voting to sell it. You would vote to sell the church after all the hours you've spent reminding me of how your granddaddy founded and built that church and how your daddy was the head deacon, et cetera, et cetera, and you'd sell it, they'd roll over in their grave. They'd be so disappointed in you. And here's another thing. Of course there is. I want to talk about this high and mighty elder that came by here yesterday. He thinks that he outranks me as a deacon, and I'm just not going to stand for it. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not going to stand for it. Did you pop out of bed this morning, this worked up? Or? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll bet you Mary wasn't real sweet with you last night. Hmm? Hmm? No, I didn't, and the other is none of your business. Anyway, this place is really getting out of hand, and I think I'm going to have to put my foot down. Dick. What? Do you know what make me happy? Really happy? What, probably seeing me in my grave? Well, no, nah, no, nah, you know, there, there, there was a time, but no. Look, the truth is we're growing, and we need teachers. But when it comes to you, we got a problem. Excuse me? Elders teach, dig and serve. What? Look, you're not an elder, even though I'll admit you've been a part of this church since before they put Moses in that basket and floated him on down the river. That's a fact. But having said that, there is something interesting, very interesting. Mary tells me that you actually spend a lot of time in the Word. Of course I do. Well, it was news to me. And that makes me more than qualified to teach. And I'd be good at it, too. But nobody's ever asked me. That's probably because you've never had the proper church government set up. Now we're going to work on that over the next weeks. But right now, think of this. If Elder Lands decides to join the fellowship, that gives us three teachers. I mean, including myself and Pastor McKnight. Now that's exciting. But we need a fourth. Yeah, we need a Now, I did think about you. I did, yeah. And I, okay. So, well, nah. so, I've been trying to think, where can we get that fourth? Where can we get that fourth? You know, you are really trying to get me going. Heading down the road in the wrong direction at full speed. I'm old. What do you expect? Time's short. When I got to get someplace, I got to get there full speed, and it doesn't matter what direction I'm heading in. Well, pump on the brakes and get back in the right lane, because you're not a Corvette anymore. Huh? Well, I may not be a Corvette, but vroom, vroom. I'm still a classic, baby. Vroom. Don't be ridiculous. <clears throat> Listen, I would be a great teacher, and I think you ought to consider me as an elder. All right. You're probably right. I should consider you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But I think I have an idea. I, th I think it's a good idea. I'm going to put an advertisement in the newspaper. Yep, that's good. See, needed, elder, must be filled with the joy of the Lord must love his pastor. I think that'll work. Yep. You're really getting me worked up. You know that? Oh, yes. Finally. Finally. You know what joy that brings me. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. Now, can we get serious? What is it about this elder and exactly what do they do? All right. Look, you got an elder and a deacon. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Tell her I'm coming, honest. Sorry. Oh, 
Sorry, Dick, got to go. But I've so enjoyed our time together. Well, we can enjoy more time together because I'm going to be sitting right here when you come back because we're not done yet. Huh? Well, welcome home. Thank you. I'm so happy to be home, and I miss my mom and dad, too. Oh, honey, I know for a fact they missed you. So, how was teaching English overseas? Oh, it was great, and I really did love it so much. But, truthfully, Pastor, I'm having a little difficulty coming back home. Why is that? It's because having lived in a country where people have so little and coming home to a country where people have so much is so hard not to notice just the how little they appreciate what they have exactly and it's depressing you just want to scream show some gratitude you know girl i remember when i came back from japan i wanted to grab people and say do you have any concept of how blessed you are exactly but speaking of blessings mm -hmm. i have a little exciting news well you know i like exciting I'm getting married, and we want you to do the honors. Oh, honey, somebody had good taste. You, oh, and I brought you some pictures. You know me in pictures. Love pictures. Ooh, him purdy. And smart. He is the top IT guy at his company, and he has a good income. That will be helpful. Oh, he has his own home, and his car is almost paid off. Also helpful. And I know my parents are going to like his parents. Pastor, did you hear me? I know my parents are going to like his parents, too. That, uh, uh, that, that'll be nice. Ooh, what's wrong? Something you see in the pictures you don't like? Honey, it's what I don't see that's bothering me. Bothering me a lot. 